Today, I'm going to talk about myself, or rather, becoming yourself, and how becoming yourself is not an easy task nowadays. And I might not be the perfect person for talking about being yourself, because most of my life I've been a very schizophrenic person. You might not realize it, but actually at the moment there are two people speaking to you. There's Dadara, the artist, and there's Daniel, the person behind the artist. And I've been an artist as long as I can remember. I've always been drawing, creating, making things, and just like as a gut feeling doing it. But then at a certain age, around the age of 15, I came up with this other person, Dadara. And it worked really well most of my life because I had this kind of protective shield between me and my dream bubble. Because I've always lived in a kind of dream world. And inside that dream world, I kept the curtains closed because I just did not want reality in. But I had this other person which could, could communicate with the outside world. And on the other end, I always felt there's been in our society way too much emphasis on the person behind the artist, the visionary. We have a celebrity cultus. And we tend to put people on a pedestal instead of putting their imagination, their ideas, their art, their philosophy on a pedestal. If, for instance, somebody wants to explain someone else who Jimi Hendrix is, they say, like, yeah, it's this black guy, has an afro, he took lots of LSD and burned his guitar. But maybe it would be a better idea to just sing a song of his. And uh, by the time, I guess by now you figured out there are not really two people on stage. But there's kind of Daniel on one end, Dadar on the other, and there's a big blurry line in between. But most of my life, I just put a wall right in between there. But that changed a few years ago. Because a few years ago, as an artist, I started my own bank, the Exchange Exhibition Bank. This was around three years ago. Seemed a really good idea back then. We had a government here who declared art a leftist hobby. There was no money for art anymore, but there was so much money to bail out banks. So I thought, like, hey, I start a bank as an artist. And this did change me a lot, because suddenly, like I did now, I stepped from that dream world of mine, I stepped into the spotlight. I, as a person, became part of the project. I became one of the performers, one of the bankers. And I realized this did have an advantage, because somehow people could actually relate better to the bigger ideas, the philosophy behind it all, because of a personal connection. And I realized having a focus on a person might not be that bad because this focal point can help people to connect to ideas, but then as quickly as possible, they have to get to those ideas and away from the person. And it changed me, it changed me in different ways. I was very anti-money before I started this project, as a lot of artists are, and then I realized there's a lot of people that are anti-money, way more people that are pro-money, but very few people who actually think about what money is, how it works, how it might work in a different way. It's just a tool after all. And that's what we do with a lot of things in our society. We quickly like or dislike them, and then we put them in a box, and we don't even look at them anymore. And we kind of, I feel, forget that we evolve, the world evolves, and ideas evolve. And I, I kind of opened the curtains in my dream world, and I let reality in. I started connecting with companies I'm giving, talks, workshops to companies. And beginning of this year, I even with the Exchange Ambition Bank, we had our own office inside the ASN Bank. And every day from 9 to 5, I would show up in my suit and tie and go to my office. And I don't know, maybe for some people here, going to my office is a normal phrase for me. Well, it, it almost felt like an uh, out-of-body experience. It was... Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, really, uh, it really affected me. And then what was really great to realize was that it made me come out of my comfort zone. And maybe I did not think that I had a comfort zone because I've done projects like building pink tanks, blowing them up with explosives. I've built big ships, shipped them to the United States, burned them out there. But still, it was a kind of comfort zone. And maybe it was this really weird looking comfort zone with blinky lights and pink and I don't know uh, what, not a real box. But still, everybody around me, they kind of understood what I was doing and they agreed with me. And now this was great, because I stepped in this other world where nobody understood what I was doing, nobody under agreed with me, and, and I loved it. Because it meant I got challenged. I had to rethink my ideas, I saw new perspectives, and sometimes I did not ag agree with them, and then I had to reformulate my ideas. I had to think, like, how can I actually convince these people that it's not like that? And it changed me a lot. And then I got a little bit worried. I thought, like, hey, if I 
changed this much? Am I still myself? But then I realized that being yourself, it's not something fixed. It's something which is constantly evolving. And we should kind of also realize that my hands, my nose, my whole body, everything or almost everything regenerates every like seven years. And how come that we as humans are so afraid to change if our body is changing? And uh, change, I feel, is a very inherent part of our human nature. And then more changed. I, uh, so I was an artist, I started my own bank, and then a few months ago, I started my own religion. <laughs> we went, for the first time we did this, it's around two months ago, we went to the Nevada desert, to the Burning Man Festival, and what we did there, it's called Like For Real, we built this big altar with a big golden like on top, and we worshipped the like with rituals, we actually took people back to a time long, long ago. I think maybe some people in this audience remember that time. It was the time before Facebook existed. <laughs> and, and ask people if they could still remember that they could like things, that they could connect. And we would guide them on their spiritual path to enlightenment. <laughs> and then at the end of the week, we burned down the big golden like, and it was this symbolic way of taking the act of liking somehow from its virtual realm and giving it back to its natural reality. And then I came back to the Netherlands and I actually already felt it a little bit out there, but then I realized this project had caused a lot of controversy. This article appeared, sculptor pisses off Burning Man attendees. And there were all these people, it's a very special place, Burning Man, it's based on the gift economy, money does not, does not exist there. And it's also about decommodification, so you don't see any logos. And this was huge, so people saw it from two miles away. and went like, man, this is horrible, there's a logo. They would not even go take a look. There were also people biking by going like, hey, we like it. But they would not even engage in the performance. And that's what we're doing more and more. We are kind of taking a look at things, but just we get so much information that we instantly like, dislike it. As we said, we put it in a box. And then it's like, it's there, we don't, we don't think anymore. And I think we should also realize when we do uh, find information, it's not even that we just like, dislike it, but we also should realize that the information we find, it's kind of keeping us in our comfort zone because Google, social media, they're not just showing us information, they're showing us that which they think we actually already uh, like or which we really want to feel. And as I said, I think it's so great to get out of your comfort zone. So what I would kind of like to challenge you, I did not practice this part of getting out of my uh, clothes. <laughs> so what I would like to challenge you is to kind of think different, think out of the box, and also don't put things in boxes. Try to constantly realize uh, what you uh, what you think about it, that your ideas might evolve and also, don't put people in boxes, even in the real world, because I know there's always this question that we uh, ask people, like, you meet someone for the first time, and you go like, hey, what do you do? And it's such a weird question if people ask it to me, because I know they are not interested at all what I do. They don't want to do know what I do for the planet. They just want to know what you do for a living. And until a few years ago, it was clear, they would ask me, like, what do you do? And uh, more buttons. Uh, and I would, uh, I would tell them I'm an artist, and I could see the look in their eyes, and it was totally clear, like, okay, it's clear, like, you're drunk most of the time, you're in bed late, you probably earn no money, and now, when people ask me, what do you do, I tell them, I'm a banker. <laughs> and so, I think, I hope that I would inspire some people to think out of the box, realize that in nowadays time with this whole digital overdose of information and the way it's presented to us, it is kind of increasingly becoming more difficult to think out of that box. And also, just don't be afraid to be yourself. And sometimes that means changing. But change might, and this sounds maybe like a paradox, changing yourself might mean becoming yourself even more. And sometimes it means you don't have... Uh, Next tech talk, I need an assistant on stage. I'll, I'll get someone from the public, I think. 
that's real interaction. So uh, not being afraid to get lost, because I think getting lost is one of the best places we can be in a way. I mean, uh, yeah, and this is a very long story, and even though I live in a dream bubble, I know this is reality and the clock which is there is ticking. So I'm going to just mention it short, but I live in a really huge house in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. And a few years ago, I walked at night on the street, and this guy who was rummaging through the garbage, he crossed the street, old guy, and he asked me, would you love to live in a big house? It's the house where I live now, and it's more than 300 square meters in one of the best parts of Amsterdam, I said. I don't have uh, a few hours to talk about it, but it's great, I think, to also be focused, that you know you're going somewhere, and, uh, but think again, maybe it is a box, maybe I know where I'm going, but I'm always open to new things, and I'm not afraid of change. And uh, I think it doesn't really matter if you change, and you don't need to be afraid of losing yourself as long as you really listen to your intuition. We heard a talk earlier about listening to your intuition, and follow your heart. And I think following your heart, listening to your intuition is something you should develop really listen, because it doesn't mean listening to your heart that you go like doodum, doodum. <laughs> and, and then, uh, I mentioned Google, so then you all go to Google Translate, you type in doodum, doodum. Uh, no, that won't really uh, help you. So I hope I, uh, I've inspired some of you to, uh, and you didn't get too distracted by me uh, undressing, to become yourself. And I want to end with a quote by Oscar Wilde who said, just be yourself, because everybody else is already taken. Thank you.